Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. Big up your damn selves in the building. Make sure you smash up the likes every single damn time and subscribe if you are new. I hope you enjoyed your weekend because I certainly did, okay? I was really annoyed I didn't get to participate in Sacrificial Saturday. Spurs sacrificed themselves. Manchester United sacrificed themselves and I was fuming. And then on Sunday, I was treated. Almost made up for everything. Two sacrificial lambs at my doorstep. However, reality has hit because today we play, unfortunately. The fun is over, there's a game to be played. And what type of performance are we gonna get from Chelsea? I mean, off the bat, no need for me to be confident. No need for me to even fake it till I make it because when you play Burnley and Sheffield United, that is as good as it gets. So Everton at home, I have no idea what to expect. There's set pieces to be defended, there's height in their team, there's physicality in their team, we must be on guard. This could end up in any which way. All I know is someone will win, lose or draw. All I know is there will be some goals or there will be no goals. All I know is the ball will be on the pitch and there will be 22 players. And apart from that, I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen. So let's not even get into that. But there is a lot to cover. There's quotes. There's hotels being sold. There's players' injury updates and everything in between. So it's a very action-packed preview for a game that does it have any real meaning any real matters I mean yes we're six points behind Manchester United with two games in hand yes we're in touching distance still of Europe if we were to put together some consistency but we've been saying that every single week since time began so I'm not really looking at the table anymore just this game let's see if we can actually win and if we do win let's not get carried away and think we're the bee's knees because we have manchester city next in the car in the fa cup semi-final and that is really do or die for the season in my opinion so listen we'll get straight into the hotel business um <laughs> hotel nightmares uh two hotels i think sold um by the club two clo two blues co so chelsea have sold hotels to Blues Co, which has effectively put them in a good position for FFP. This is why when, you know, asked the question, are we going to be okay for FFP? Are we going to be sanctioned or in terms of deducted points? I'm always saying, listen, I don't have the, the accounts. I don't have the finances in front of me. I don't know the figures. I don't know the plan. I hope with these people being extremely rich, they're billionaires, they're businessmen, you would hope that at the very least, the finances and the business side would make sense and would be okay to go. The football inside, the sport inside, absolutely all over the shop. Medically, physicality, tactically, systematically, everything is all over the shop, but at least have the finances on job. Because if the finances are not good and we are in trouble, wow, that, that is a real shit show. So it looks like we're going to be okay. That takes a lot of pressure off. And obviously the Premier League, another loophole has been found, I guess. Not every team has a hotel to sell. Luckily we do, but once we've sold them, that's it. There's no more hotels to sell. So we still need to make sure that in a year's, two years time, we're not finding ourselves in the same position. Once you've sold all of your assets, you run out of assets. So <laughs> let's see how that all the plan pans out, but it seems like we'll be okay for the foreseeable future. Um, now, obviously getting into the injury updates, Enzo is looking like he's gonna be out. The Sassi was also added to the injury list as well. Both of them will rehabilitate as long as they will need to. We will not know when they're back. That could change in terms of time frames, and I'm not even going to bother even look for it. We just roll with what we have. Um, and Sterling is ill. He's been vomiting sick, so hopefully he feels better soon. I'm a, I'm a guessing he's not going to be involved. So outside of the usual, those are the guys added to the list, um, and that will reflect obviously in my team. Now, I want to start with um, Pochettino. Obviously, he's there's been so many quotes like. The amount of quotes, guys, has been incredible, right? And look, the shortlist that came out from Simon Phillips, I'm hoping that it's not the actual shortlist, but alarm bells will be ringing again for the second time because if this is the shortlist and if the club are looking at alternatives potentially for Pochettino before we get into his quotes, I'm once again seeing three managers with three different completely, completely different philosophies and ideologies and approaches to football. I don't believe that De Zerbi, Eddie Howe and Thomas Frank 
should be on the same shortlist. If you're trying to go in a certain direction and you know the direction to build your team's playing style around the players already acquired or the most expensive players like Enzo and Caicedo, there's a certain which way you want to play. There's a certain, um, you know, there's a certain approach you want to take with a sporting director. You should have three managers that kind of sing from the same song sheet and have similar plans. Thomas Frank, all the way to the Zerbi is like going from two different ends of the spectrum. So that's just, in my idea, just idiotic. Um, so that's not good. And then obviously we have the fact that, in my opinion, I mean, these names are not of the caliber that we should be aiming for, of course, in terms of results, but also, you know, mentally, are, are they going to kick this team into gear and actually, you know, push them and propel them up the table? Are they going to come with, you know, loads of excuses? Are they going to come with all of these, compl you know, these complaints and all that kind of stuff? It's a long, it's a long, it's a long story, but to shorten it, don't like the shortlist. Really don't. If it's true, I don't like it. Um, but anyway, so the only one that, you know, like I said, will make sense is probably De Zerbi because of everything we've done with the club and the staff and the players that he's worked with previously and all that kind of stuff. But even him, he is going through some very poor form at the moment at Brighton. Um, yes, the quality of the players is lower, but it's not it's not good um, to see the run that he's on recently. So, yeah. But Pochettino has been speaking a lot. Um, and... I feel like po Pochettino is is in his quotes in his press conferences he's he's trying to he's trying to kind of do everything he's trying to speak on the behalf of the board because he's employed by them so he'll talk about data he's trying to protect the players after calling them out but he'll now protect them because he realized they're young and they're fragile and this generation can't handle a cussing in the public and then he'll try and appease the fans or you know or he'll try to go against or go again you know go back and forth with the fans and try and put reality in perspective or then try and say we need to win and this is Chelsea and it's just a mess it's just too many people to please and to be honest you cannot please all these people it's not possible there's only one way and that's to have a clear direction mentally about where you want to go and just articulate that and don't try and play to anybody's games so he's talking about that you know the team needs to bring in experienced players this summer um this is something that we need to talk about with the board and the strategy for next season whether he is in my opinion even the right person to oversee such things and should even be guaranteed those conversations based on our league position i would say no um but it seems like he's going to be safe as we saw a few days ago that was kind of the report but with this manager shortlist, I don't know what to believe. It's kind of all over the place at the moment. So we'll have to see what happens. I think it all does bear on that FA Cup. And that's why I say that's a crucial game. I think that's our only way into Europe. If you do win the FA Cup, he's probably going to remain in charge. If he doesn't and we finish in 10th, I think it's very difficult to, to kind of fight his case if you're the board, um, even if you get along with him. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but he did say to play in Europe this season under our circumstances. Oh my goodness. Um, we've had eight to 10 players unavailable every single game. If you add more games, we'd struggle a lot. I agree with that. I agree with that. What I, what I don't agree with is not wanting to kind of set an objective to go for Europe, even right now, even though I don't believe we're going to get it, he might not believe we're going to get it, but you shouldn't not still strive for it, still go for it. There wasn't long before that a few months ago, Newcastle were in 10th, right? Newcastle were in 10th. They were right next to us in the table. They've had loads of injuries this season. They've had loads of problems. It's been well documented and articulated that Newcastle struggled with keeping their players fit. But I've not heard them come out and say, yeah, we don't want to set an objective for Europe because, you know, it's not looking too good. We don't want to cause too many expectations. And then if we don't get it, then it's a little bit outrage. What? The race for the title is relentless. You drop two points, one point, it's it's over. The race for top four, as we've seen in many previous years since we won the last title, that it's everybody dropping points. It's basically a free for all. You build up a bit of consistency and you're sorted. We saw Tottenham drop points again this weekend. The race for Europa League, don't even get me started on the inconsistency. Newcastle are now sixth. Newcastle are now ahead of United. We could theoretically win two games in hand and be level with United. So even though I think I don't think we're going to do it, why why not at least say that's the aim? That's the aim. It has to be the aim. I don't want to hear about injuries because Newcastle have had injuries, but you just crack on. You just get on with it. Like we're not playing in Europe. We have one game a week. Get on with it. 
Like there are young players in Cobham that you can bring into the team and you can add, you know, depth to your squad and you've got to be able to mix and match and, and handle that. That is part and parcel. Yes, we've had a lot of injuries. Yes, it's ridiculous. But don't just forego Europe. Don't just give up. Don't just say, oh, I'm too afraid to put expectations on it. I don't want to because I don't want to cause any, you know, upheaval, or unrest or outrage if we don't get it. There will be outrage if you don't get it. There will be upheaval if you don't get it. It's a target. It's a, it's an objective. It has to, has to be. So I don't agree with that. And like I said, it's West Ham's, it's Brighton's. You don't, you think Brighton don't have injuries? <laughs> I've seen Brighton have injuries all season. Jao Pedro's to your incisos, Gilmore's. We can keep going. Esther Punan out for most of the season. Do you think other teams don't have injuries? Crack on. And I've named teams that have been in Champions League, in Europa League this season before being knocked out. So I don't like to hear it, but you know, this is what we're getting. Um, but at the same time then, he says, you know, we want to be in Europe and it would be good for the development of the players next season to be in Europe, which is obvious, which is true. We need to be in Europe financially, but also just factually, <laughs> we have to be in Europe. So it's just, it's, I, and I listened to the press conference. It's it's just a little, it's it's just a little bit all over the shop. Like it's very difficult to, you know, pen in and 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 kind of get to a point of what are you trying to get across? What is the message? What is the overriding overall message? It's kind of like many different messages, and it almost feels like he's talking to multiple people at once. He wants to send a signal and a message to the board to get experience, but he also wants to tell the players that you know. You're not under too much pressure because you're still young and there is a lot of injury, so you do need time. But at the same time, he wants to tell the fans that this is Chelsea and we do need to win and we do need to sort out our issues with, you know, the lack of concentration from the players. It's 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 tough. It's tough to keep up with. I won't lie. Um, there was also the quote about the last seven eight games that I heard about us being unbeaten. Context is key. The data sometimes lies. Being unbeaten in the last seven, eight is not a good thing, especially when you've played Burnley and Sheffield United. So it's not something to kind of prance around and project as a good thing. If you had played Man City, if you'd played Liverpool and Arsenal all in the last few games and you were still unbeaten, obviously we want to win, but that would be not looked at as a failure. When you play Burnley, Sheffield United and now Everton today, it's a different story. So again, this whole unbeaten thing, uh, let's put some context onto it. It's not really as good as it sounds. Um, you also spoke about not parking the bus in terms of fixing that defensive kind of shape and that defensive record that we have this season, which I, I think is a good thing. I don't want us to park the bus. I don't think we have the players to park the bus. Um, I think if you sign midfielders worth 200 and let's just say 220 million, whatever, we won't add Lavia's fee on. But if you sign midfielders of that price tag, you should be able to control and keep the ball and defend with the ball. You shouldn't have to... If you're going to sit back and defend like, you know, Everton uh, or, or or anyone, you know, of lower quality and park the bus, then, I mean, why would you spend so much on a midfield, especially those type of midfielders you may have signed, you may as well have signed an Onana and, you know, from Everton and, and players like that. So, yeah, I agree. We shouldn't be parking the bus, but we do need to actually get more compact and we do need to start defending like a, like a unit. Um, it's not just concentration, but this can also be done systematically. It can be done tactically. Like you have to take responsibility and, and, and be accountable to the defensive record. You can't just say it's down to everything other than myself. You are the coach. You are the manager. Um, so obviously the set piece coach is coming in from Brighton. Hopefully next season, like I said, that kind of kicks into gear even more and they start to actually learn how to defend in those aspects and score from those aspects, but that will obviously take time. Um, so yeah, yeah, a lot of talk on European football and obviously development. He did speak about an update us on Okachuku. I personally just ruled him out to the end of the season. They said a couple of weeks, brother, the season is nearly finished. Just rule him out for the end of the season. James, Lavia, Okachuku, Inkuku, um, and Chilwell. Well, maybe Chilwell. I don't know. But just rule them out, bruv. <laughs> let's get Fofana as well. Just rule them out. Just, let's, just, let's just keep things very, very honest, very, very clear. These men are not playing for us this season. And if they do, they are not going to be ready. They are not going to be sharp. Thank you very much. Keep it moving. Keep it stepping. Um, he was asked about, I think, Gallagher playing left wing. Um, it was a really good tactical question from a friend of mine. Um, she's doing incredible work. The answer wasn't very clear on why Gallagher was playing left wing against Sheffield United. Didn't particularly like the answer. He did speak about balance, but I don't think it brought balance to the team. I thought it 
I have to disagree. Like, I don't really think Gallagher playing left wing brings any balance to the team. He's not a winger. He can't dribble. He can't really, um, you know, give anything from that position um, on, on the ball. And we should be thinking about on the ball against Sheffield United. So he spoke about tracking back and balance and work rate and all that. But if we're thinking about what we do that way against Sheffield United, the worst team in the league, instead of what you're giving on the ball that way, And it's uh, it's a madness. It's not. It's not very good. So didn't particularly like that answer. But yeah, that's that's the quotes. That's the conversation. It's Everton at home. My team is on screen. Um, ideally, Chukwemeka would start in the ten. Ideally, yes. The the whole Palmer Madueke thing. I, you know, I, I like Madueke. I think he at least gives you a guarantee that he'll take on his man 1v1. He's a very good dribbler. His obviously decision-making needs to continue to improve. He's started to bring a bit of a shot to his game, some power in the shot as well to score from angles, to put in that right foot at the near post against Bournemouth, which was great to see. We need more of that. Um, kind of reminds me of Saka in a way where he has that near post finish kind of on lock. Um, and the tracking back and the defensive work, work rate has been much improved this season in comparison to last where he was leaving his man against West Ham and, you know, Emerson Palmer he was scoring so I really actually like Madueke um whether he'll be you know what we need him to be in the long term we don't know but he's he's made improvements but I personally wouldn't move Cole Palmer away from his strongest position like we did against Sheffield United put him in the 10 and sacrifice what we've got going on down that side so it's unfortunate for Madueke but this is life as Graham Potter would say that's life for me Cole Palmer has to play on the right wing in his strongest position where he's been best and Madueke has to just stick to being a super sub until we can figure that out. But right now, we need to win games. So, Chukwemeka in the middle. I'd have Mudrik back on the left where, I th like I said, just give him a run of games. Let's get the balance back. Jackson up front, Palmer on the right. You're going to have to go with the midfield um, as it was on screen because Enzo is not available. Um, and if you're going to bring brothers back from loan, then let's use them. You know what I mean? Like, you chose to go with Cassidy from Leicester and sent Andre Santos, who's playing extremely well at Strasbourg and is player of the month, I believe, um, who I thought could have really done a great job. And I said it in my Preston preview months ago that I felt like he could really participate in this team, even though he's young. He actually has a bit of leadership about him. He actually has a bit of experience playing the Brazilian league, more experience in first team football than Cassidy. But that was the decision we make because of height. Even though Cassidy comes in, loses headers against Sheffield United, Badia Shill. Listen, it is what it is. Sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. But when I get it right, I'm going to let you know. Andre Santos should have been in this damn squad. And he was good enough to play in that midfield and rotate with Enzo, be a, a, a press resistant guy who is able to build out from the back and is able to win tackles and get around the pitch and help us defensively. But it is what it is. So you brought back Cassidy as a board, as a unit, as a hierarchy. You use him now. Give him an opportunity to play. Let's see what he does. Um... And you're getting height into the team. And need I not remind you, Everton have got a lot of aerial threat. We need to defend our set pieces. So Cassidy, this is what you was brought back for. Get to heading. Get to aerial dueling, brother. Um, and the back four, the sassy's out. Badia Shaw's been poor. It, it's basically as it reads. It's pretty simple. So that's what it has to be, guys. So you can debate about Sanchez versus Petrovic amongst yourselves. Personally, I didn't give a damn. Um, <laughs> give a damn I'm gonna keep Petrovic in there purely because he's been solid for large parts of the season he's only had a bit of a hiccup recently I think the defense in front of him does not help they've been absolutely awful so I want to give him the benefit of the doubt a little bit and just let him rough you know go through the rough patch if we have to get a new goalkeeper in the summer as embarrassing as it is we have to um maybe Kepa Elizabeth Lagla will come back and and no, no, let me not do that. He needs to be sold. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my team. Everton's team, expected team. Well, do you know what? No, no. Let's go with the Injury FC. I want you to see the Injury FC. Look at this. <laughs> injury FC. This is our full 11 of players that are unavailable. It's mad. It's mad. So yeah, I do feel for him in this regard, but you still got enough quality to get some results. You shouldn't be losing to Sheffield United. And you should not, well, sorry, drawing with Sheffield United and Burnley. You, you can do better than that. So don't make too many excuses. Um, but yeah, injury FC is crazy. It don't look great. Everton's team is on screen as well. Like I said, um, their expected team, we should be beating them. But obviously we have to actually go ahead and do it. So let's see. Um, all right, guys, we're going to wrap up there. Um, there's not really much more to say. <sighs> we enjoyed our weekend. Are we going to enjoy our Monday night?
score prediction on anyone, you let me know in the comments down below. I'm not getting involved. Make sure you smash up the likes. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time in a bit, people. Peace. Thank you.